we're looking at the guillotine or noose chokes, as I like to refer to them as. We're going to look now at what I call an inside noose. It's a little different from the one I just showed you, which I call an outside noose because his head is outside. With this one, I'm going to put his head uh, in the center of me. This one isn't taught as often, but I like it a little better. Uh, I think it's harder for the guy to get out, and it takes less power. It really is devastating if you get good at it, and it can be a faster, more devastating choke, so I think it's, it's better for self-defense, and a lot of people don't teach it as commonly for whatever reason. The setups are all the same. Anytime I get his head around shoulder level or lower, I can do this one. Now, with this one, we started by grabbing his chin. The difference is, I don't want to pull his head into my armpit like this. I want to get his head here right in the center of my lower abdomen, okay? So this will happen because maybe, you know, I snap him down and then I move him here. Once he's here, you just have to cover his head. I'm gonna give you a little space here right now so we can see, but when it comes time to choke, I wanna make sure I'm like this. Why? Because my hips and chest are gonna push on his head this way while my arms are pulling out. So you've got a squeezing action that's a lot tighter than just your arm power for the regular guillotine powered by the hips as well, but basically it's the arm doing most of the work. In this case, I'm going to push in with my hips and pull up with my hands like this. This is really a fast, nasty choke. And with him caught here in that same 90 degree to the ground, and on top of that, his head being pushed back, it's really, really devastating. No matter how strong a person is, once his head is bent down like this, he's just going to be driving into his own neck. He's going to be making his spine bend. So the hard part will be getting a big huge guy in this position, but once he's here, it's pretty easy to choke him out compared to trying to, compared to, trying to hit him and strike him. So let's look at some of the different grips. The simplest one, which we can do right from a chin grab, is simply stack your other hand over top, okay? So when I've got him here, I just want to make sure I squeeze my elbows in and pull my hands up and push in. Okay, that's a really, and it's right on the trachea and he's being choked out quickly. Now, a slightly tighter modification of that is to grab his chin with the second hand as well. So instead of just grabbing my own hand like this, I can actually grab the chin here. It's not much different, but it allows me to squeeze my elbows in a little tighter. Remember, I want my elbows like this, right against the sides of his head so that there's no side to side motion, okay? So I'm not just pulling up here. You see all the space between my arms? He could put a hand through there. Yeah, and that could possibly stop the choke. So I wanna make sure I'm always squeezing my elbows like this, okay? In this case, I'm gonna grab his chin, I'm gonna stack my other hand, I'm gonna squeeze my elbows right here, and then I lift up with my hips, okay? That one drives the bones right into, the, right into his trachea, and he's gonna go unconscious pretty quick. Uh, the only other grip that I like to use from here is to have a...